We're on. Hmm. Hmm. There's enough light here. Well, you see, it seems like under maybe the sun's going down. Yeah, I think I'll turn it on. And there was a buzz in the light that bothered me. Huh. Let me listen to it. You are right. I can live with the buzz. It's not buzzing now. I, I can't hear anything. That was a good choice. Good eye. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, this is a personal antique. I know that this is important mm -hmm. to you. What is that thing? Well, I, this, I couldn't look at it right away and tell what it is. Right. But this know. right here happens to be my grandmother's donut cutter. She would make donuts for years and years and years. So she uh, probably got it in the 50s. And then when I found that she had the donut maker, I said, that's what I want to do. In mm -hmm. fact, Ah, now I was going to say, well, nothing here is here by random, so I'm like, why would there be a paper bag? But there's something in the paper bag. This, this is my grandmother Stewart's donut from November of 1996. <laughs> I put it in this bag. Molly signed it backwards sometime. <laughs> wow, okay, that says Molly, but backwards. Wow, that's a beauty right there. It still looks edible. No, don't do it. No. You grab so this donut and her donut maker. This donut's from 1996. It's 2019. How many years is it? 23 years. <laughs> and then I made a video that is so important to me. On December 21st, 1998, we made a video that my grandma and I made the donuts. I set up the camera just like this, oh. and it's about a 15 minute video. Have the recipe on the back. Ah, okay. That's and that's what my grandmother that's, always- That's a good tray of donuts. That's a good looking donut. Yeah, my grandmother would always bring donuts uh, to the family get togethers. Uh -huh. So she would make the main course on Easter, which was ham. I would cut the ham. Loved an early am, and we'd always celebrate with coffee, cream, and donuts at the end. Uh -huh. Just good old fashioned cake donuts. Right. Yeah, but grandma's cake donuts. Yes. Nothing else like them. That's right. Now, there's several other artifacts here, but this one was really particularly nice of Molly's painting. Hmm. Okay, this painting Molly gave Deb and I. And it was on 62103. It would have been our 21st wedding anniversary. And Molly was 12. And what was interesting, she was really difficult that day. And I just got all of her case. She came home and was, at 12 years old, was able to paint a picture of us. Not looking forward like most kids would paint a picture. Uh -huh. She was looking into the distance, uh -huh. into the future. And so that's that's you yeah. and Deb. Deb. That is, uh, yeah. Wow. Twenty first anniversary. Beautiful. Jim. You and Deb were married for a very long time. Yeah. So all together, how many years? Um, mm, let's see. Probably 1983 until 1996. I'm not good at math. <laughs> okay. And I have probably about 25 letters from Molly and 10 or 20 from Sarah where they'd write stories or say coupons. I'm not going to read this, but um, this is a beautiful story. There is one I would like to read. That would be this one. Molly is eight years old. Dear Dad, thank you for giving me more fun, a, sn a snicker bar, um, <laughs> and a... Uh, I really appreciate that you give me. You are a very mediocre dad. And, <laughs> and I'm glad for that. Love, Molly. Yeah. I think it was yeah. a compliment. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure she understood mediocre, mediocre and it, it was misspelled too, but beautifully so. <laughs> 
Someday I'm going to say, Jim, you are a very mediocre dad. Yep. So. Who is the gentleman that's in front uh, of the picture? Jerry Fox. Terry hired me in about 1976 to wow. sell stereo equipment okay. when I had big hair. Uh -huh. And I worked for him until the very last day of 1999. He was influential in me in a lot of ways. We were close. He was always supportive. 77 to 99. Yeah. Boy, like uh, that, that dwarfs the marriage. Yeah. That's a well, long time. He was 77 uh, for a few years. And then I came back to team. Uh, probably in 82, something like that. Okay. So I was with him, and he was so, we had so much fun. I remember once we were in Las Vegas. We went down to Lake Mead, about 12 miles south of the Hoover Dam. We rented a little boat. We drove up, up to the Hoover Dam on the downside. We're looking at the Hoover Dam up there. I drive up to where the turbines are blowing out the water. I'm touching the wall, and I said, Terry, do you think we should be here? He points up at the people up on the tour. He says, I was on a tour the other day here. I said, well, that's not the same. So we start going away from there, and somebody with a bullhorn pulled us off onto the side. So what are you guys doing up there? I was just checking things out. So we started talking to him. He wanted my driver's license since I rented the boat. Then... He went upstairs, up to the car, came back down. He says, where's St. Joseph, Minnesota? I says, by St. Cloud. He says, I grew up in Staples, Minnesota. Uh -huh. Yep, Sheriff, Sheriff Charles, so Sheriff Curtis. We good old boy, he let us off, but we were, I was concerned. Now if you do that, you can't do that. So they made it more, you know, but uh -huh. Terry was always a gem. And really set the whole direction of your the yes. first chapters of your career, yep. and so that kind of relates to this, right? Yep. Um, one was shock electronics before I started at Team, okay. and the other one was when I was working at Team as an audio rep. Did they do essentially the same thing? What's the difference between what you sold at Shock and uh, what you sold at Team? One was Pepsi, one was a Coke. They were okay. we were competitors. Okay. Shock was cooler. Team was cool too, but I was. Thought shock was cooler, but team is really what gave me my legs and mindset for the last probably 12 years of working in the retail industry. Uh -huh. Then he gave me a year to be able to get my mind on, and I said, I'm going to go start a business called Tell a Vision, very first day of 2000. What he shared with me, there's five core values in doing business. One positive cash flow, two, cash reserves, three, pay the man, the taxes, sure. four, have no employees, and five, don't advertise. Everything's word of mouth. Huh? So, a couple of those very important values that I live by still today because of Terry. And he, he was just always one of the best to me. And I... And I think I was too. We would go to Vegas uh, probably five times and we'd go to the trade shows. And we just had a wonderful time learning about technology at that point. In fact, I did that all the way up until even this year I went a little bit. You know? But anyway, that's Terry Fox. You also got in on really like the golden age of stereo equipment. Exactly. I mean, the receivers of yeah. that time, the beautiful blue yeah. lights. It, yeah. it was a sexy yeah. industry. Yeah. You got to be there yeah. saying, dig this. And what it was was a value added because you couldn't buy the stuff that I was selling at Benny's or Sears. Uh -huh. And all the people coming back from Vietnam always brought the big S, amplifiers, receivers, and speakers. So I was ingrained in it. And the very first song that made me go to shop and buy my first stereo system was the Eagles, Take It Easy. Yeah. And I just love that song. And if it wasn't for that song, the stereo, my mind self said, and I had to have a stereo for a lot of reasons. For the music that I have in me, and that was really important. Still is important to me, uh -huh. the music. Yeah. So. And probably the girls was part of it too. Yeah, well, that always helped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta have a good stereo.
Mm -hmm. um, one quick aside, this happened to fall off when you were doing something before, and then I noticed you have a couple more. So why little screwdrivers like that? Well, it's kind of a thing. This was from Central McGowan, a supplier for uh, my father's business. So he had this and a couple other screwdrivers and wrenches. And then he just, I just said, I'm going to keep this one, put it in here. This one happens to be, we did a lot of little things. Um, for Ed Tech, and a friend of mine wanted this made. So what he'd do is, he'd call this part two of two, mail this out, and this was for free, where one of one was like $2,000. Mm. So it was kind of a nudge to share his sales and ideas. So Jeff Broberg owned Vector Sales, and he was also really influential in my audio business. One time he had a LED machine that would read the sound pressure. We went into the trader and trap and we'd walk around. Oh yeah, we'd show that girls. Oh yeah, she's horny. They'd look at it and go, and then we'd go like this. And it was all just the sound. Uh -huh. Probably cut that one up, but that was, <laughs> That's up to you. That was kind of fun. I enjoy it. Yeah. So all this little stuff has a story. Each one of these stories. Every single thing here has yeah. a story. Yeah. How about the ring? Uh, that was my high school ring. Mm -hmm. Yep. This one was from my mom, the oh. sharing that my grandfather, uh -huh. great grandfather, worked for uh, Northern Great Northern Railroad. Great Northern Railroad. Uh -huh. And do you do you recognize this uh, yeah, creature here? The goat. That's where the goat yeah. came from. Was yeah. the Great Northern Railroad? Yeah. 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 So it's a small world after all. And I have matches that represent places we went to. I've got business cards uh, from Graceland. On 20202, oh. I went to Graceland, Memphis. Okay. I recall calling you that day. Yes, you did. On 020202, uh -huh. I called my best friend, Al Neff, <laughs> and we talked for quite a while. I was by the Mississippi River, and uh, I remember the Graceland experience. Uh -huh. really didn't want to go, but after I got there, I went, this is really important. Uh -huh. I'm glad I did. Yep. So... There's so many things, it's hard. Why Krispy Kreme? Like, here's something that's like, why in the world would this be in a display like this? Well, in 2004 or five, Molly, Deb, and I went to Las Vegas. It was right when Krispy Kreme became huge. Right. So we're at the Venetia, Venetian eating Krispy Kremes. Molly puts that on. She poses, and I do the video. <laughs> so, that's right. why I have it. Because it, it's that memory of our trips out to Las Vegas for right. probably about ten, eight years for sure. Uh -huh. and that is the very hat that Molly wore. Yes. Not just a yep. hat that would remind yep. you of that. Yep. Okay, there's your hat again. Okay, what's next on the uh, tour? Let's go to my very first meaningful stereo photo. Mm -hmm. As an artist, I happened to get really swept away. I took this photo on September of 1992. It's two photos from one eye perspective mm -hmm. and the other. Mm -hmm. Then I put them together. They look identical at a casual yeah. glance, but yeah. they're not. They're slightly right. shifted. Right. So when you look through a stereoscope, it becomes like a 3D image, just like a Viewmaster. Right. And so over the years, I would write on the back stories of 80% of over 3,000 stereo photos, uh -huh. which is since up until about a year ago was how I journaled my life unknowingly. Hmm. Hmm. You mean there was no sort of like consciousness when you were doing it? You just wanted to capture a good photo? If I didn't know where it was, when it was, and I would look at it, it would be like, what is, who is that well, photo of? Sure. Where is that taken? I said, I want to have uh, the story. Often it would be, here I am in downtown L.A., and I remember going to the, um, uh, 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 it was called um, uh, the really interesting restaurant. And when I was at the restaurant, I just felt that I wanted to remember what I had that day, where the photo was, mm -hmm. and actually the story was, how good the breakfast was. 
Mm -hmm. So it wasn't always about the time and place, uh -huh. but the senses, right. the sense of smell, uh -huh. feeling, and looking at the tall buildings mm -hmm. and being part of the essence of Los Angeles, uh -huh. San Francisco, all the places I traveled, which to me was always out west. I love yes. the west. Yes. You've taken a couple trips to the east, but usually for a certain purpose. You yeah. are a guy that points west. Yeah, always. always. Uh -huh. Okay, western-looking rock here. Yeah. On the first trip to Las Vegas in 1986, uh, we went to the Consumer Electronics Show. First one I ever went to in Las Vegas. First one I went to was in McCormick Center in Chicago. But when we're walking out in the desert, I found this rock and I said, Oh yeah, I like this rock because it shows the layers of sandstone. Mm -hmm. So I brought that back as part of a treasure. Also, the following year, Debbie and I went out to Las Vegas and ended up hmm. with this rock. Okay, and it has kind of a crystal in it too. Mm -hmm. Then, as I continue to find all of these stories intertwine. This one happens to be a photo of me Deb took. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Very tiny, Very tiny. But right there. Yep. Okay. And I remember I remember when I put my hand up there, I found this bone and I brought it down and I went why is that bone up there on top of that rock? And there were all these crows flying around. And that's what they did. Actually, ravens, they'd come back, sit up there, and they'd eat their meal, and then the bones got dry, and they just stayed there. Mm -hmm. So the bone from a raven eating like a mouse was on that picture that Depp took, which is part of the stone uh -huh. from that rock uh -huh. right there. I have a, a quick question for you, Jim. Do you know the difference between a crow and a raven? Yeah, it's the um, yeah we went through that. It's just bigger and has one more. What they're called pinions. Pinions. So the difference between a raven and a crow is a matter of opinion. Opinion. I love that stuff. <laughs> it's just the play on words are so good. Yep. So, okay. This fell down. What's this all about? Well, I did a lot of work for a nationally known artist named Charles Capster. Oh, yeah. So as I do the videos for him. He would give me things that were important, paintings that were originals, but this one was the brush, and I felt the brush was important. So I have the brush that he used to get the wash for the backdrop. Uh -huh. So I have this he gave me, and I think that in sense kind of shows that as a giver, I like to record artists telling their stories. I'm better behind the camera than I'm in front of it. But anyway, I'm thrilled to be working with so many like-minded people in our community yeah. and continue to find that they give back to me as I give to them. Uh -huh. So that's really why I do what I do. Uh -huh. yeah. You tell visions. Yeah, television. Yep. Did and that so, name just come to you? Uh, how did I remember I'm driving down 494, uh, or 94, ready to pull into St. Joe and went Television Productions. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just bang. Three words. Tell uh -huh. a vision. Right. Not the TV set, right. but the television. Uh -huh. And so I, I love that name because it's more than just seeing. It's hearing, tasting, touching, all the senses to give oneself the ability to have vision. Not just sight, uh -huh. but the whole essence of life. Yes. That's what I do. It's the like perfect it. name for your company and what you do. I've always felt yeah. that from day one. Yeah. I got this harmonica from um, Rollo. Actually, Rollo Ainimi. So, I have a lot of musical instruments. I have an accordion that Molly's going to play uh, a stand by me tomorrow. Oh. Did you see the video I did of her uh, doing her, playing the accordion for my grandmother and so. Sarah? Okay. Would have been, let's see, over 20 years ago. Okay. She played it so well. Stand by me. 
That sounds tan. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So on an accordion. Yeah. Now you, ironically, are not musical. Am I right? No. The only you thing I love was, music. Right. You get music, yeah. but you don't right. play. Right. Nor can I sing. Uh, Never could. So. Yeah, you're like me. So I went into radio, yeah. and you recorded hundreds, yeah. if not thousands, of musical right. performances. Right. Yeah. Right. This one happens to be one of the favorite stories that I have. Okay. In 1997, I went out to a consumer electronics show in Las Vegas, drove up to San Francisco, met my good friend Dave Simpkins. We stayed with Kurt Thermoskart and his wife at the Cornell Hotel and then we had a free pass to go to the Fillmore West on one night. It was a private party, place was crowded, and I get there, we're drinking Anchor Steams, and I wanted to take a piece of the Fillmore back. Uh -huh. I thought maybe I could steal a row, uh, a drape. I said, nah. So I found these ashtrays, brought back about six of them. This one says, Mac World 1997, with Dave Simpkins at the uh, Fillmore West watching Brian Setzer mm. and his orchestra. Mm. And they brought the big band, and when they do Rock This Town, there were three up front. He, I was right in front. He'd come down, strut his guitar with his letter pen. I'd watch him, then he turned around. He'd go. Then they'd open up the drapes, and the band would come out, and it was a big jazz band playing Rock This World. So this is important. Not only that, we were there from 8 until midnight. As we walk out, we ran into a couple of hippies. They said, do you guys want to go to a rave? I said, yeah, let's go to a rave. So we followed them to this huge warehouse, and it was like hundreds and hundreds of people there. The opening keynote speaker to that event in 1970, 70, 97, 97 was okay. Timothy Leary. Oh, wow. He had died six months earlier. Okay. But he made a recording of this, which was the beginning of Burning World. Burning Man. Burning Man. Okay. Burning Man. Uh -huh. So this is this. We spent four hours watching all these people walk around, chains, leather, snakes, tattoos, and I'm a pretty young boy from Stearns County. I'm going, <laughs> yeah, this is the night I always wanted to have in San Francisco. So that was the most interesting night of living in San Francisco. Brian sits here at the film room uh -huh. and going to a rave uh -huh. and just having a great time. Uh -huh. So, yep. And in the small world of it all, Brian Setzer came to our town uh, for Bobby yeah. V's memorial yeah. service. Yeah, yeah. He is really a Wonderful musician to me. Multi-dimensional. Yeah. yeah, a lot more than most people know. Yep, yep. And then I, I happen to see the, the picture of me and Bobby V, since we're kind of on the topic oh. of Bobby. He was an important guy in your life, too. There we are at Pioneer Days. Yeah. You invited me yeah. to that. Yeah, basically, I started working uh, probably a month after uh, 2000. As that, as a, I rented from Bobby V, in a sense, Jeff and Tommy. I had the lower level... And for 15 years, it was so important to me. And I got to know Bobby right here. Yeah. And then when we went out to the Pioneer Days, he was just, they were having fun. Nighttime food in saloon at 9 p.m. Chicken wigs, egg rolls, fried gizzards. Fried gizzards. Yeah. And, so, here's <laughs> and I said something like, who the heck is going to eat fried gizzards? And Bobby was like, oh, yeah, yeah. we had those all the time. Yeah. So, <laughs> Al Neff and Bobby V. Yeah. Couple of beautiful guys. God bless him. Yeah. God, God bless, bless him. Yeah. What else would you like me to talk about? Oh, who is this fine young man? Ah, uh, that's a picture of my graduation class. Uh huh. I graduated in 1969. Yeah. And I'm still involved with the class reunion. Just went there a couple of nights ago. Oh. We'll have our 50 year class reunion coming up in September. Wow. So this is me uh -huh. when I was. Young. You're a handsome guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, uh, then it transformed to, like, that guy up there. You've had a, quite a few uh, interesting visual chapters. Which one? Well, I was pointing at that oh. one, but the thing I'm thinking of is the yeah. one with the, we'll go over to that. the, the huge yeah. hair. Yeah. Yeah, that was a rock cut. Well, let's, yeah. let's go ahead and do one more, and then we'll put a bookmark in.
It sounds good. Dealer's mm. choice. All right. My children, Sarah and Molly, would always give me coupon books, and they would never fulfill them because <laughs> that was them. Yeah. Happy Father's Day coupon book for Jim McAllister. Good for one free hour walk in Oklahoma nature. Was that something that was around here, or did you have to go to Oklahoma? Uh, Sarah was living in Oklahoma at the time. Oh, I see. Okay. Good for one free sightseeing adventure down 10th and Robinson, again in Oklahoma City. Okay. Good for one free beer uh, at Biting Sun uh, Brewery. I like the idea. Yeah, they always came up short. This <laughs> one, of course, is... Oh, yeah. Tell me about this story. Well, that attaches to a larger story that I, I saw, you know, that we had, you have the booklet for the concertina party, because that was our project with uh, George Cervantes and his wife Nellie, who were just such wonderful people. And I always like this uh, saying, where good friends gather and new friends meet. Exactly. Yeah. You bought this for me. Uh -huh. and I have one like that, too. And then uh, I want to hold that up, because I love that picture. Yep. It's uh, my going away present, kind of, to Jim. Uh, Jim, thanks for sharing your visions. Al Neff. How about that? How about that? Well, well I'll put that in our coupon book. We'll have a beer. I'll bring mine over. We'll have a beer out of yep. Beck's yep. mugs. And all the other, other treasures are bones that I found when I was in Yellowstone. This is a shell I found on the beach in a, a Los Angeles area. Santa Monica, uh, uh, then these are uh, pine cones from Yellowstone. Um, I don't know what kind they are. And then um, stories, stories, stories. Yeah. What's going on here? Um, That's a good day. Yep. Yeah, I know how to hang out. And by hanging out, I go to Cory Park, have a beer, Schlitz beer. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. My mom and dad, that's what they drink. And there you can't find Schlitz beer. I like saying the word Schlitz. Mm -hmm. And so I was out there leaning back, taking in the sun, probably about four or five Schlitz. Yeah, baby. It's a great day. Great day. Okay, to okay. be continued. Yep, all right. Beautiful. All the rest would have been too much. I have, uh, I'm like you, we have a lot of parallels. 